Hey, good evening, everyone. Absolutely amazing how different the lighting situation gets. It was just two weeks ago that I would sit here and we'd be doing this strictly by candlelight, and now it's still bright and mostly sunny out. The sun's just going down now. So, we have made it to one of the most fundamental if not the most fundamental chakras. The main chakra that affects every other chakra. We are in the throat chakra. It never ever ceases to amaze me how powerful this one area is and what I have learned through doing chakra analysis with people for the last year is that nine times out of ten if you have a chakra blockage anywhere in your body it again not always nine times out of ten though it's from the, th the throat chakra it is your throat chakra is causing a hindrance in the energy flow to other areas in your body. This is all based off self-talk. It's all based off affirmations. It's all based off bitching and complaining. You know, and it's frustrating being in the position of seeing how society trains us and programs us to want to complain. You know, we're taught that we are empowering ourselves by doing this. If you, one of the most earliest uh, representations of this I remember is them expressing that if you go to a restaurant definitely is different nowadays, and lots of people have lots to complain about. You would go to a restaurant back in the 90s, early 2000s, and if you didn't like your meal, if it was just a little bit too cold or a little bit too whatever, you're encouraged to complain. Send it back. Social media, and you look at how it's structured in its entirety, and the first thing that comes up when you want to click the options button is the report. I'm going to report this because I don't like it. I'm going to complain about this. And so society is being conditioned to negatively route energy, negative energy, through their throat chakra, through their actions to influence the rest of the machine around us. And this is not healthy. Where's the compliment button? I'm sure there's like the like button. Put a little heart on it, comment. But where's the buttons that let you really say to a uh, content provider, your stuff needs to be promoted. There should be a promote button instead of a report button. We should be allowed to interact with each other. And instead of businesses and programs paying Facebook ads or Instagram or TikTok or whichever platform you're on to promote your business, to promote your content, people as a voting system, imagine a, a world if we could choose who we want to promote in the same level and on the same level as who we want to restrict and who we want to report. Think of the shift that would be caused just by that. And I mean, it can be done. It can be done by a simple website designer, which I, I've taken and I'm certified in which rightfully, I think they just give you a certification for participating <laughs> a course that I took. Um, but 
understanding the concept of how to put a button in place, it, it's easy to do. And the fact is that they don't do it. You know, as you all know, being here with us on Odyssey, we are over here for a reason. Community guidelines don't like the truth. Community guidelines structure it to have you negatively impact your throat chakra and your actions to affect other people around you. It's shameful. I also know if you're here with me tonight that you know better. I know better and that we're here to boost each other up. We're here to promote each other. We're here to spread, spread the good word. We're here to spread positivity. We're here to make those adjustments. So we start ourselves. We we'll start with making these adjustments inward. The first thing that I'm going to bring you tonight is something that I discovered by accident. And I mentioned this a while back. And I was doing my research and I was looking into limiting beliefs and I was looking into different victim languages, victim vocabulary versus leadership language. One is using your throat chakra, so to speak, negatively, and one is using it positively. And I zoned out. I was trying to write down I was trying to write down unconditional love versus a limited belief. And I accidentally came up with something called an unconditional belief. I'm choosing to believe unconditionally that that was a message. That was a pure guidance. I was just in a meditative flow. And that's what came out. Because the power behind what an unconditional belief is has changed my perspective of how I view my life, how I view other people, and especially how I understand how other people view themselves as well as those around them. So an unconditional belief, which is the powerful, the most powerful statement that you can come up with are the statements that of, I don't know how, and I don't know why, but I'm going to do something. I don't know, nor do I even care in some matters, how something's going to be achieved. I just know that I'm going to accomplish this goal. Regardless. Now, the example that I gave a few weeks ago, I'm going to use again, as well as we're going to really, really dive into unconditional beliefs, limited beliefs, affirmations, and everything that I have documented that reflects your throat chakra. So, an unconditional belief can be seen in stories where in the story that I found when I wrote it down by accident, and I'm like, what does this mean? So I googled it, and the example given was when you have a mother who is told you are infertile, and you can never have a child. And they know in their heart, and they grow up knowing, I'm going to be a mother, I'm going to be a parent, I'm going to have a child, via adoption, through the method does not matter. And in this story, because this person believes so unconditionally that they were going to accomplish their goal, 
that in this story that was given, they did adopt. In Ashley's case, she grew up being told she was infertile. And she had an unconditional belief that she just wants to be a mom. And so against all scientific odds, which I think at this point in stage, science has gone out the window. And then the window shut behind it. And lock itself. She has had Finn. Attributed to using energies, using spiritual energies, using healing methods, holistic and natural healing methods of her body. Another beautiful story that I truly like is the young lady who, and I do mean young, I believe she was around 10, maybe 13, and she was diagnosed with a terminal disease and told that you have maybe a year, two years to live. And there is a spring, a natural hot water spring at a resort somewhere. And this, I can't remember this specific location, but this spring is renowned for healing people. She had this unconditional belief that if she made it to the spring, if she bathed in these waters, that she would be healed if she made this pilgrimage. And as her story concluded, after she made the pilgrimage and she bathed in these hot water springs. Doctors then found no signs of her, I'm not sure what it was, cancer. You hear this all the time though. People are given a diagnosis, they're given a label. And they're told, get your affairs in order because you don't have very long. So they have an unconditional belief that that doctor is wrong. Some people go the spiritual healing route, the route where they purge all the stuff that's causing them to be sick and ill and stressed in the first place. All the things that affect our throat chakra that ripple through our body. They quit the job that they hate. They verbalize themselves, I hate my job. I hate my job. When I was 19 and working at Tim Hortons, my best friend at the time told me one day she hated her job so much that every day driving to work, she would fantasize about driving her car into a ditch so she wouldn't have to go to work. These are the people who get sick. And as I've mentioned with the other chakras, the chakras that are one on top of the other do interchange. So when we say something, when we speak it, even in our mind's eye, we visualize it. The throat chakra is our story, the story that we tell ourselves. And when we're ravaged by negativity and bullshit because of these stories that we tell ourselves and we see it and visualize it, and what does that do? It creates disharmony in the body. It creates the disharmony in our environment. We are manifesting these horrible situations that we're telling ourselves just by choice of words. And so back to my story, these people who are diagnosed with terminally ill cancer, terminally ill, fill in the blank in general, they know what is wrong. They know these areas. We know what's wrong. We're the ones telling ourselves we don't like this. And it is a guide. It's like when you're sitting in an uncomfortable chair and somebody says, what's wrong? Well, the chair is uncomfortable. Now, yes, we can tell ourselves the chair is comfortable and be content being uncomfortable. The fact of the matter is we know 
what is wrong. And we tell ourselves all the time. But we don't listen. These people who get this diagnosis, they listen. And they know. They're different chakras. They know what gives... You can't see me touching my stomach. But they know the sacral chakra, where their pleasure is, what makes them happy. They quit their job that they know they hate. They take up art, or they take up music, or they take up singing, they take up hobbies that they love, that bring them joy, because you have motivation to do it. And when you have motivation to do something, again, it's just step-by-step -step process here. You love it. And when you love it, you can then verbalize to yourself that this is where I want to be. This is my passion. This is my pleasure. And it removes the fear. It gives you security in your choices. Because you then have security in your choices. We're jumping full chakra range here. And root to crown. You can then release. When you release, good things happen. Miracles happen. These people who find, quit their jobs, they find their passion, they listen to their chakras. They stop lying to themselves, thinking that they need a dead-end job that's going nowhere. Think that we justify it. And it's unjustifiable how much we justify bullshit to ourselves. Write that down. <laughs> Feel it. Tattoo it on your arm. Write it on your hand in Sharpie ink. Feel it. And these people who do this, they stop justifying the bullshit. And they tell themselves what they know to be true. In the mind's eye, the third eye. They remove the illusion that's being justified negatively through the lies that we tell ourselves. And they heal and they get better and they go back to the doctor so many months later and their cancer is gone. Their body has healed itself. Put it to whatever means that you want. These are factual case studies. You can call it religion. You can call it science. You can call it spirit science. The bottom line is, it's the truth. And when we tell ourselves <laughs> the truth, so shall you sell it dead, dead. <laughs> the truth shall set you free. And that is how you unlock. That is how you get the energy inception in your throat chakra. I'm here to say baby hands in your throat. Uh, a limiting belief. Some people get the general idea. I'm really, really happy. I've been waiting almost a month for this. To sit down and really rip into what limiting beliefs are and just go over it with you. I've mentioned it a little bit before. But now you get the big picture. A limiting belief is the story that you tell yourself why you can't do something. There is no famous book a little engine that can't. It's a little engine that couldn't. Going up the hill. I know I can't. I know I can't. I know I can't. How many people in your life does that sound like, though? I know many people. Someone I was very close to. My daughter was newborn. I'd ask them for help. A baby was crying. I can't. I can't help. I just can't. Why? I just can't. That scary ass motherfucking affirmation. I can't. 
The Wright brothers didn't say, we can't fly. Now, I don't know much about NASA or space, but the space plan certainly didn't say, we can't go to the moon, we can't go to space. There's gravity. We just can't. You see it every day. You turn on the news, the politicians. You look at the school boards. Can we get more funding? And the higher-ups say, no, sorry, we just can't. Can we solve world hunger? Sorry, we just can't. Can the billionaire philanthropists donate enough to charities to make a difference? No, sorry, we just can't. Everything wrong with everything in general comes from I can't. You can tie them directly to the chakras and some give more justification, more validation, a little bit more logical sense and reasoning to the story that we tell ourselves, based off which chakra that we're tying the negativity through the throat chakra into. You know, root chakra, I'm afraid of. I can't because I'm afraid. I'm afraid I'm going to die. I'm afraid I'm going to, to make a mistake. I'm afraid. It's a big one. That's our comfort zone. Success is always just on the other side of comfort. And so many people can't because I don't want to. Oh, jumping. <laughs> chakras, that's our solar plexus. Let's go to the sacral chakra. I I can't because I feel bad. If I do that, I'll feel bad. I'll feel guilty. And then you start intermingling them. I can't because I'm afraid I'll feel guilty. Solar plexus. Does anybody not do something because they just don't want to? <laughs> I'm guilty. One chakra down, I'm guilty of that. Solar plexus that causes shame. I'm ashamed that I'm verbalizing that I don't want to do something. I can't do it because I just don't want to. Sound like anybody you know? I think we're all guilty on some level. That's where you get stuck. Because your solar plexus is your motivation. That's your, your action. Your ability to take action. The opposite of I can't. The I can. Heart chakra. I don't like it. It. Why don't you want to do something? Well, I just hate it. You know, and then they crisscross and in intermingle. Why don't you want to do something? I don't want to do it because I'm afraid. I don't want to do it because... Fill in the blank. Then you hate your coming if you're intermingling the energies into your heart chakra. I don't want to do something because I hate it. Speaking, telling yourself the story that you don't like something so much that you won't do it. Then you're just stuck. Limiting beliefs. A lot of people will tell you, 
I just can't lose weight. I just can't. Genetics. It's. I mean, really, it truly does come down to I don't want to. Eat healthy. I don't want to. I hate it. Money. I'm always broke. I'll never have the money. So you ask them in a conversation, why won't you save your money? Well, I just don't want to stop spending it on the things that I'm spending it on. The things that give me pleasure. I even know someone who doesn't like to spend money because they hate money. They hate spending money. And so when you put the different terminologies of negativity in order, you can see quite clearly, hey buddy, you can come say hi. Or not. Want to come say hi? Wait there, watch the candle. Slow. Hi. Hi. You guys having fun? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody remember being a kid? Where you're told you can't do something and you're like, fuck you, mom. I can do what I want. Watch me. And then you go and screw it up or break something. And you realize why you were told not to do it in the first place. But that's the motivation that we want. I remember I was explaining to my daughter, Anastasia, one time that there are certain things that it's not that you can't do. It's that if you do something, you're going to get really, really bad repercussions. For example, if you're really rude to someone, they may hit you. And because in her mind's eye, she's never seen that concept before. This was years ago when she was younger. She just couldn't imagine. Like, no, they can't. Somebody can't hit me because I'm rude and mean to them. There's the I can't. Even I'm taking a moment to think of all the times that I really screwed up something because I really told myself, I can't. I can't fail. Not a bad affirmation. There are different levels of self-talk. I can't, I can't remember which slot I put in my notes, where they were. However, the main levels of self-talk are the just, in general, I can't, I won't. There's the next level up that falls into, I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to smoke again. I'm, if you're giving up something, I'm never going to eat junk food. If you went on a journey similar to myself, I'm not going to hunt anymore. I'm never going to kill anything ever again. Lesser mosquitoes. Then there's level three of self-talk. And this is the basics of affirmations that I can. I'm going to. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to save money. I can, the I can. And then there's level four, the I am. I am losing weight. I am saving money. I am successful. And there's a level five that is along the lines of this is God's will. This is meant to be. The universe has decided this for me. The universe has given me this success. To be successful 
and especially in the realm of healing ourselves, we want to stick to at least the last three. Now, when I first heard about this information, it was suggested to not worry so much about the fifth one, worry about the first three. But I really personally avoid negative phrasings at all costs. There's a bit of a trick to it, especially when you go into the grocery store and asking for someone and they ask you, well, do they have milk? So when I'm trying to avoid saying, no, they don't have something, I just phrase it, they only have, say, soy milk. And depending on the type of people that you're speaking with and the, the level of talk and self-talk and affirmations that they use with themselves, this can create a very large disconnect to not be able to say no. That whole thing, never say never. Rightfully, it should be always say always. So. I want you to do a head count of the people in your life that you can think of that fall into these limited belief categories. The people who say, I will never, or I am always. Even that's a positive one, but you put a negative spin on it. I'm always broke. I'm always late. I'm always fucking shit up. I'm always, and you know, the thing with your brain and your body is that your brain doesn't know the difference between what your body is experiencing and what is reality. Your body is experiencing whatever it is that you're telling it that it's experiencing. If you are telling yourself, I am always broke, that will never change. You can even take what I just said as a double meaning. If you know someone, or if you are someone, I can never lose weight. I just, I try, and it doesn't work. I just can't. I'm always overweight. It's genetic. And the thing is, then, you know, the, the limited beliefs and the negative self-talk, you justify it to yourself. And this is when you're in danger territory. Pure danger territory is when you justify negative behaviors because this is the story you're telling yourself and this is what your body, your brain and your body is going to respond to. This is the pitfall of all addictions is that it's justified. It's okay. I don't have any money. I'm always broke. Well, I can go to the bar and spend this money that I don't fucking have because it makes me feel better. Because then you're feeding one of your chakras. You're feeding into your pleasure center and your sacral chakra. And you feel guilty about it. But because you've justified it, you keep doing it. Junk food, overeating, same thing. I don't have the money to eat this food, my body can't handle eating this food, but gosh golly darn it, does it make me feel better. <laughs> so I'm going to keep doing it anyway. Then you get the motivation, and then you love something that's killing you. Video games. You know, th this is the same mentality, is that you know how much time you're losing. You know how much money is being wasted on it. And you know that as stimulating as they are, this is not reality. 
For anybody who's played, you have these memories of these characters that you... friends, families that you bonded with. Similar to reading a book. But when we read a book and we love a character, we just love that character, we will either want to be that character, or that character dies, and it's like, we cry. Because it makes us sad, because we do have that connection. Because in our mind, the story is real. And it is a real story. It is something that somebody has created and crafted, and we are holding it tangibly in our hands. But because it's in letter form, we know more realistically that that character is just a character. Then we get into TV, and in our mind's eye, we know that when somebody dies in our favorite TV show or movie, you know, it's sad. Especially when you're a child and you're having trouble differentiating these feelings and understanding that this is fake. You feel that loss, you grieve it, you mourn it. Video games are another step into it. Where there's a part of your brain that really truly does take it as reality. And it makes it so much easier to justify the hundreds of thousands of dollars that get spent on it. Hundreds of thousands of hours that you lose to it. Precious time that you never get back. As with any addiction. As with being drunk. As with binge watching TV. And how this ties in is what I was saying, is this is the story that we tell ourselves through our throat chakra. We create this illusion. Third eye, hindrance, the biggest hindrance is the illusion that we create. One thing that I find very difficult about being in a position of being a parent is a surprise versus a secret. And it's come to my attention that when we are keeping secrets to surprise somebody with all good intentions, we are creating lies and we are creating secrets. very throat chakra based because we justify it to ourselves well this is with good intention well the pathway to where is paved with what good intentions we've all heard that open communication and it's hard because the truth you open one chakra, you're opening all the others. So what happens when you open the truth? You go right back to your base chakra. The truth is motherfucking scary. It's your fear center. The truth is uncomfortable. It does not make you feel safe or secure. Often the truth is not something that you want to hear. We fear it, so we avoid it. What's harder is the truth to ourselves. This is where the affirmations come into play. The best way to tell the truth is through positively wording these affirmations. Just so I can read my notes, I am going to turn the light on. Nothing it stays hidden in the dark forever when you're telling the truth. When we rephrase something to be positive, we have to understand two elements. We have to understand 
the negative phrasings and where they come from and what their origins are. And we also need to understand the most powerful positive phrasings. One thing that some of you may be aware of, and this may be a new concept to you, is called victim vocabulary. And this feeds the negativity in our throat chakra. This is what makes us a victim. This is the I can't. This is the blame. This is the dissonance. This is the, it's all somebody else's fault. Why me? Grass is greener on the other side. They wrecked my grass. Leadership language are phrases of empowerment. This is where you can talk to yourself and you can tell yourself that you can water your own grass. There is a way. You'll be successful. So things like victim vocabulary fall into words such as we have a problem. The I can't. The it's impossible. Feeling that you require others and that you can't do something on your own. Telling yourself that something is a task or a chore. Words that make things in your head bigger to be. Phrases that in your head you are making a situation bigger than it is. Old phrasing, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. Because when we, how we say something, feeds it energy, and when we feel, feel, yeah, feed it negative energy, we feel that dissonance, and that simple task, that simple job or should only take five minutes, well, we're making it feel big. And it feels exhausting. And it feels this way because we're putting negative energy, we're draining ourselves into just thinking about the impossibility of doing something. Statistics. People who use statistics, this comes across as very disempowering. When you think of something like suicide rates, and they just give you a number, it demeans, it makes people a number and not a person. You know, and it can be very insulting. If someone that you loved was lost or involved in a negative experience and you hear somebody else talking about it as if they're just another blip on the numbers. The obvious victim vocabularies here, insults. You insult someone. You blame, you give fault. Somebody else's fault. I can't do it. If they did it first, or they do it better. And then you're comparing. Well, and you project your emotions onto somebody. You're demeaning. This is all victim vocabulary. And it makes you sound like a goddamn bully. The thing is, the way society is structured. A lot of this is programmed into us through how TV and Hollywood scripts are made. And everyone at their own core default on some level is going to receive these victim vocabularies into their default mode network, their basic programming being a human being from somewhere. The 
leadership language, solution to all solutions. When you can change certain elements from the victim vocabulary to be empowering, instead of having a problem, you just have an issue. A problem is something that doesn't have a solution. An issue is something that has a solution. Perhaps we have not found said solution yet. There is still a solution. The reality is there are three solutions to every problem that you have. When you change your mind frame, when you can tell yourself something positive, you can empower yourself to know that you can and you will succeed. You're telling someone a situation that you're in and you have obstacles. When you change the phrasing of I have obstacles, the challenges, I just have a challenge to overcome. That sounds a lot easier to do and less energy taking than I have an obstacle to overcome. It sounds like a really big ass wall in military training that you got to climb up and fall down the other side of. And so just by changing, changing the words, in our heads and to verbalize it to somebody else, it changes the energy flow that we have and it changes the vision, the illusion, the story. It changes our whole physiological structure, including the vibration we're on. When we speak from a place of accountability, respect and responsibility, when we take responsibility for our actions, the most powerful tool I think I've ever heard is when we can sit down and we can analyze when we're having that pity party moment and we just want to blame. And the truth is that everyone is interconnected with everybody else. We are all connected. Everything that you see is a fractal of who and what you are. The way people treat and respond to you is a fractal of how you treat and respond to them. The question is, who's going to do what first? The truth is that if we can admit to ourselves through truth that we are creating our own anger, we are creating our own fears. And you see that through how we speak to ourselves through negative or positive affirmation, through the throat chakra. When we are creating our own guilt. When we're, we know that we're justifying something to ourselves that we rightfully know is wrong. Choosing to try and find the positive in a negative situation. A good skill, though it can be misused, as you can see. When we're creating our own obstacles. Through phrases like, I don't want to. End of the day, when we're really truthful to ourselves and somebody says, you can accomplish this goal, all you have to do is stop doing something, save your money for a few months, and then you, you can succeed. A lot of people won't do it because the truth is they just don't want to. Have the truth in yourself to admit. that I am creating my own obstacles. I am creating my own challenges because I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want to face that fear. Put the responsibility on yourself. And I'm not saying this in a, a sense of this is the noble and right thing to do. I'm saying this because by doing it, you release that energy flow. You're having a fight with your husband or wife or best friend or boss or everybody fights with somebody. And you admit, they're not making me angry. I'm making myself angry. 
because I'm having these preconceived fake conversations in my head of how the next conversation is going to go. And I'm getting myself all riled up thinking about things to say. And this happens when we're using victim vocabulary. That's the key part that a lot of people are unfamiliar with. This is where the visualization techniques come in. This is where we're going to be utilizing our third eye. We're going to be visualizing ourselves having positive, free-flowing conversations with people using positive words. We're going to visualize, we're going to stop thinking about arguments and all the, the witty comebacks that we're going to say just to hurt them because I want to, because they hurted me. And, Fucking Jerry Springer bullshit. Exhausting just thinking about it. One of the best ways that you can free yourself from victim vocabulary, from having these negative conversations with yourself as well as with others, is if you perform and go through something that's called either a rim session or a gestalt session. And the basis to this is Give you an example. If you have a limiting belief that you are always broke, take a moment in time and go back through your memory and find the first memory that you have of ever feeling that way, of ever making that. And this is where you get into the Toltec path to freedom is the when we are speaking these phrases to ourselves, we are making agreements. I will never hunt again. I will never kill again. I will never smoke another cigarette again. You know, we make these agreements with ourselves, these oaths, these verbal pacts. And the truth is that somewhere buried in our subconscious, We have done this before, and usually when we're very young, at a point in time where we're feeling a very large emotional spike, and we make an agreement. And that agreement becomes an unconditional belief. It can be good, and it can be bad. If you... thing comes to mind, fall down ice skating as a kid and everybody's laughing at you and you feel guilt because you were doing something that's supposed to be making you happy and now it's filled with a negative energy and then that stems into shame because you have then lost the motivation to do it again, ever again. It goes into grief because you're severing all ties and you now hate the fucking thing. So you then tell yourself in your throat chakra, I'm never going to skate again. A commonality that I've seen with people who sing is they're told at one point in their life when they're a child, you have a terrible singing voice. So they make a pact, they make an oath, they have an unconditional belief within themselves. I can't sing. And come hell or fucking high water. They are convinced that they can't sing. Understanding this is really important because when you understand it, you can use it. You can go back through your memory, through a rim session or a gestalt session, and you can change that story. You can find that pinpointed memory and you can realize where the agreement was that you made and you can break it. You're conscious of it. 
the truth is that the best way to be successful and the best way to heal is to create unconditional beliefs that I'm going to succeed. I can sing. I can dance. I can ice skate. I can build a plane. I'm going to build a rocket. I'm going to colonize Mars, you know, pick your poison. Another really, really powerful tool that I'd like to mention before we head out tonight is that if you're unfamiliar with where these agreements are coming from, is that you can go back and you can write your own story. And there's a few different ways that there's a few different types of stories that you can write with yourself. If you're somebody who has struggled with food, you can go back and you can write your food story. You can write about all the food, coffee here, maybe not all your food experiences throughout your whole life, but the significant ones that you can remember, the ones that are tied to these emotional spikes that have caused these cultic paths to freedom, these agreements that we make to ourselves, these unconditional beliefs. Your money story is a really powerful one too. You can go back through your life and you can look at your parents spending and your grandparents spending and your spending and you can make determinations that you never respected your money because perhaps Everybody around you has never respected their money. And so you've just not seen the situation of how to respect money. You can go through, and one that I'm doing for myself is on deadlines. Because I remember very specifically being in high school. And I made an agreement that every time I missed a deadline, I would just fucking bullshit it. And then as an adult, I remembered that I had this unconditional belief, unconditional limited belief that deadlines can never be met. Things happen. People get in car accidents. People get sick. COVID. And they're all just excuses at the end of the day. You can do a story for excuses if you're somebody who struggles with lying and telling the truth, you can go back through your life and you can write your truth story or your lie story and you can figure out when in time you started lying or stealing or overeating or drinking, aggression, video games, any addiction. I encourage all of you to go forward and use these tools, these tips and tricks to heal yourself as well as share what you learned here with others. Now, I'm not going to close off just yet because we have a member of our group. Who is currently very ill. Experiencing quite a bit of pain. And so before we head out tonight, I'm going to do a quick distance Reiki session for them. I hope him and his significant other do make it through what they're going through right now. This person is a, a long time, very active participant in our signal group and corresponding with both Ashley and myself. And so, very, yeah, I just get a little emotional. We're going to be sending vibes, healing energies to this man right now.
Thank you all for joining me for that. If you found what we spoke about here today helpful, please share it with a friend, family member, someone that you know can benefit from learning how to speak positively to themselves as well as to other people. As well, sharing what we're doing here today will help other people understand what it is that we do and how we can help them achieve their goals and reach the point in their life that they deserve to be living. We encourage you to send us a testimony to Ashley at Elemental Growth or to myself, Tristan at ElementalGrowth.org. Org. And I thank you all for joining me, and I will see you next week.